What if it's not just the flowers and the beautiful things that can bear witness to God? What if it's actually suffering? Matthew chapter 27. The final gospel here we'll go to. Matthew chapter 27, verse 50. When Jesus cried out again with a loud voice, he gave up his spirit. Matthew tells it just like we already knew Jesus gave his own spirit up. He, Satan couldn't kill him. Satan was actually at this point trying to keep him alive because Satan didn't want a dead Jesus without sin. He wanted Jesus just to fall just once and then he could die. But at this point, Satan didn't want Jesus dead. A dead Jesus was a, was a sacrifice for sin. Jesus gave up his own life, verse 51, at that moment. The curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook, the rocks split, the tombs broke open. The bodies of many holy people who had died were raised to life. They came out of the tombs after Jesus' resurrection, went to the holy city and appeared to many. There was a resurrection on that Friday afternoon. But there wasn't just a resurrection of the holy people. Maybe patriarchs and matriarchs of the past. Luke, Matthew sets it up so that we hear this resurrection. There, this was a powerful moment as Jesus gave up his life. God says, I can have first fruit proof that his sacrifice paid the penalty. But standing on the hill, that centurion, cold and calloused, never had prayed a prayer in his life to the God of heaven and earth. When the centurion, verse 54, and those with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and all that had happened, that is Jesus giving up his life, they were terrified and exclaimed, surely this was the Son of God. Apparently, in the midst of suffering, there can come beauty and life. Lives were resurrected, and the heart of a cold, calloused centurion was resurrected. He was part of the great resurrection. Eight words, surely this was the Son of God. And every commentator, every commentator, and every Bible scholar that I could find on this passage believes that the Gospels record it in such a way as to emphasize that this was not a whisper or just a mere statement, but it was a cry. It was a shout. These words were said in no whispered tones. All eyes were turned. Who said that? It was a centurion, the Roman soldier, the least likely What did he really mean to say? Surely, truly, your translation may read, it is a, a statement of absolute certainty. This is God. He uses the same word that is used in Matthew 14, after the storm, when Jesus calms the winds and the waves, and they say, what manner of man is this? Those who were in the boat worshiped him, saying, truly, of a certainty, we are absolutely convinced, and that this is just beyond a shadow of a doubt, that you are the Son of God. That's what the centurion, who had just previously, hours before, mocked Jesus as nothingness, he now stood before the cross after having experienced nothing but suffering and darkness. And he looks up into the face of that now dead man and says, I am certain he was the Son of God. 